Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here, and today we're going to talk about the book Red Dragon and its various live action adaptations and figure out what is the best Red Dragon adaptation on today's episode of Hack the Movies. Thanks to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. The only thing I love more than being famous and talking about movies on the internet is a good night's sleep. Unfortunately, after I moved into my new apartment, I was having many sleepless nights. That all changed after I found Helix Sleep. They make premium mattresses and bedding that gets delivered right to your door. I went online and took their sleep quiz. Afterwards, I was able to find the perfect mattress to fit my disappointingly odd-shaped body type. I'm going to be straight with you guys. Old Uncle Tony, he's a tosser and turner at night. Sometimes I fall asleep on my back, wake up face down. I, I, I can't control it. So I made sure to check that when I was taking the quiz. Also, when it comes to mattresses, I prefer a firmer one as opposed to a softer one. So I made sure to check that also. These results ended up with them suggesting the Helix Midnight Lux mattress. I was real excited to get this mattress in the mail. And when it came, I opened it right away. It was extremely easy to undo. Here's how easy it was. Welcome to Nap City. Ah. Oh, 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 oh. I have a new bed. If you have a significant other, you could do the sleep quiz together. I don't, so I did it myself. But that's okay, because I'm getting the best sleep ever on my Helix Midnight Lux mattress. I really do love this mattress. I've been sleeping on it for about two months now, and it is the most comfortable mattress I've ever had. Way better than the previous one I was using. Don't just take my word for it though. My cat also loves the mattress. She refuses to leave it. I think she thinks it's her mattress. When you get your mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. They even have financing options and flexible payment plans. I love my Helix and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, choose Helix. Click the link below for up to $200 off your Helix sleep mattress, plus two free pillows. Hello, Johanna. Hello, Tony. We made it. We finally did it. We made it. We made We, we did. We did Silence of the Lambs. We did Hannibal. And now we're back for two movies and part of a TV show. We're really putting overtime into this <laughs> one. <laughs> Yes, Red Dragon, the first book by Thomas Harris. Yep. I'm shocked he doesn't write more books. It's literally Black Sunday and then the four Hannibal Lecter books. Mm. You think he would write more because one, he's very good. Two, every single thing he writes gets a film adaptation or TV adaptation. Maybe he doesn't have the inspiration right now or something or doesn't want to shell out something He probably crappy, makes a lot of know? bank. He probably yeah. makes a lot of bank from those mm. movies. Like... <laughs> Like, I think he specifically wrote the script for the fourth movie just so he could make more money. But mm. now with Hannibal and the I know the Clarice show was a bomb, but he probably made a pretty coin off of that. Probably. I want him to write more stuff. Thomas Harris. I, I mentioned this in the previous video. Like the one video, the one picture I found of him is like him holding a possum up. Yeah. Thomas Harris, put that possum down. <laughs> write another book. I, I want a possum. <laughs> no. Anyway. Why? They don't get rabies. Anyway. Little babies. Well, I mean, they could, but it's like very rare. Anyway, Red Dragon. Red Dragon. I've read this book uh, a few years ago now. So I'm a little hazy on stuff. I looked yeah, up the I, thing. Ages ago. Uh, so I would have had more time to prepare, but you know, someone decided to be like, Johanna, we got to film some episodes. <laughs> we got Watch our... these two in like three days. <laughs> we got a little busy. It's been a very busy month, okay? <laughs> We've been doing that Halloween parody, mm -hmm. which is coming out soon, which is going to be a lot of fun. Probably what, be two out. Two weeks after this? Well, the week this comes out, it's probably coming out the same week. If things go, if, hopefully, if everything goes well tonight, because uh, we're shooting tonight. Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of stuff going on. I had my birthday. Thanks for not showing up or anyone showing up for my birthday. It was sabotaged by Mr. Lobo. Uh, my birthday's not even here yet. You idiot. This comes out after the birthday episode. I'm talking about right <laughs> now. Oh, my God. Anyway. No, I'm definitely not. Show no one that's, show up. <laughs> that's, that's an update on Tony's <laughs> life and the show uh, mine's great <laughs> my life's great i'm going to disney again oh wow what a shock <laughs> what a shock i'm getting uh my wedding dress next month i'm getting married next year 
Things are going maybe. great. No, there's no Allegedly, maybe. you're getting married. Oh, my God. Allegedly, you're getting We're married. We're talking about eloping now, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Red Dragon. Uh, really good book. Apparently, when Thomas Harris was writing Black Sunday, I think he was, like, meeting up with a lot of FBI guys. Mm. And he started learning more about this stuff uh, and it inspired him to write the book. And uh, for those of you who haven't read the book, I did this in the Dune episode. I'm like, let me give you a quick breakdown of the book before we get into the adaptations. It's a lot easier than the Dune book. The Dune book was actually really hard to condense and somehow I did it. Okay, so the Red Dragon novel. Will Graham, who was scarred physically and emotionally when arresting Hannibal Lecter, is pulled out of retirement by Jack Crawford to investigate the Tooth Fairy Killer, not to be confused with Darkness Falls, I was gonna say. which we already reviewed. <laughs> I didn't, we, I didn't, thought, we didn't plan that initially. Yeah, I thought you were either going to say Dwayne the Rock Johnson or <laughs> Darkness Falls. <laughs> uh, a man who has been murdering families and performing sexual acts on the mothers... Uh, Will reaches out to Hannibal for help. This backfires once he finds out Hannibal is in communication with the killer and gives him Will's address. The killer is Francis Dollarhide, who was a victim of abuse from his grandmother and other family members at a young age. He also used to be disfigured. At some point, he became obsessed with the Red Dragon painting by Robert Blake. I think it's Robert Blake. I'm pretty sure. Uh and believes he is becoming the dragon himself. He even gets a full body tattoo of it. He's not gay. And if a reporter calls him gay, he takes it very personal. Uh, Francis learned, <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a minute. Francis learned how to process film while in the military. And then he got a job doing that in the States. There he stumbles onto a romance with a blind coworker, Reba. This throws a wrench in his murder family slash become a dragon plans. Yeah. We've all been there. We have a plan. You're like, I'm going to murder this family. I'm going to become a dragon. And then some lady comes into your life and you're like, oh, she's pretty cute. I, I guess I could murder the family next week and go on the date tonight. But anyway. Will finds out that the killer is using the family's videos to target his victims. They go to hunt him down, but he kills himself in front of Reba. Or does he? Mm. This was a fake out. Uh, and he attacks Will's family at their house, only to be shot by Will's wife, Molly, during the attack. He cuts up Will's face pretty bad. And that's basically the book. Yep. Not a lot of Hannibal in that book. Uh, <laughs> well, well, it's the same for Manhunter. Yeah. Well, Manhunter had the appropriate amount of Hannibal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first movie is Manhunter. Mm -hmm. uh, by Dino De Laurentiis. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you find out this movie existed? Because this is kind of, this went under everyone's radar. Um... Not like recent, but maybe like high school time. So, okay. I don't know, between 2003. And... I didn't know it existed until I saw this, not this, the same type of tape. Uh, I bought this a few years ago, but I remember being in a Rite Aid, I think, and they had this tape and I'm walking by and I'm like, oh, Silence of the Lambs. And it's like Hannibal Lecter's legacy of evil begins here. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Uh, they put this out in 2001. So this is right after Hannibal came out and a year before Red Dragon. Yeah. So they're definitely like, it's definitely one of those like, let's repackage this movie to make it seem like it's a part of this. Um, I bought the tape. It didn't work. It was broken. Amazing. And then I rented it from Blockbuster, the DVD, oh, and I watched it. it. And I really, really, really liked it. It's good. It's good. Uh, directed by Michael Mann. Uh, who is no stranger to crime dramas. Uh, let me see here. He produced the shows uh, Miami Vice, uh, Crime Story. He even came back to direct the Miami Vice movie in like the 2000s. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's really good. Uh, it was going to be called Red Dragon, but I think Dino De Laurentiis, he put out a Mickey Rourke movie called Year of the Dragon or something, and it bombed. And he was all like, Mamma Mia, no a dragon in the title. You caught a man hunter. Ah. Uh, <laughs> But, but that's what he did. I'm let it go, you Dino. Your pasta face. <laughs> I talked about that. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. Tab Show, here's what I don't get. It's not canceled. Oh. It's continuing. I'm now one of the rotating guests, and I brought oh in pasta God. face as my problem. <laughs> Tom Hanks as Geppetto? God damn you. But we're not here to talk about that. But you came out on Twitter recently saying that you're not actually Italian. That right? was you hacking I me. I don't know what you're talking I'm not hacking anything. The first of if someone just leaves their screen up <laughs> as soon as and I see Twitter sitting there, I'm just like, hmm. Let me know how that, <laughs> let me know how that defense works up in court. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> anyway. You're like, hi, I'm a high ranking member <laughs> of this company and I have access to this Twitter. Why can't I say anything? Anyway, <laughs> uh, David Lynch was set to direct this. God damn, would I have loved that. Apparently he thought it was too violent for him. It's like, David Lynch? You? I mentioned that in another episode of like, this was too violent yeah, for this? <laughs> David Lynch, you've shown me some of the most horrifying imagery in your films. That <laughs> eh, was 86. I guess it was a different time. Mm. Um, you say so. Yes. Uh, one of the, A lot of people auditioned to be Will Graham in this, but uh, one of my favorite thing that I found uh, was Timothy Dalton was going to be Will Graham. Huh. And then he was like, wait, James Bond's available? <laughs> and then like he went and was James Bond. Very underrated James Bond, I think. Timothy Dalton. Yeah. Not so much his first movie. I like his second movie. But anyway. The cast for this is William Peterson as Will Graham, who went on to CSI fame, right? He's CSI, right? And he's in Fear. Oh, yeah. Marky Mark. He's the dad in Fear, Mm -hmm. isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Tom Noonan as Francis Dollarhide, who we talked about in um, the last Action Hero episode. Uh, We are also going to be talking about him later on in October for Monster Squad. Uh, and recently he was in a movie called House of the Devil by, Ta- not recently, like ten, the- 10, 11 years that ago. That sounds super familiar. By Ty West, the guy who just did X and Pearl. It's one of his early films. I need to see Pearl. He's the bad guy in uh, House of the Devil. He's really good in that. I really like Tom Noonan. Uh, Brian Cox is love Brian Cox. Hannibal Lecter spelled L-E-K-T-O-R. But the, but the, the VHS has it spelled the way it usually is to cash in. Um, Where's Brian Cox from? X-Men 2. And? other stuff trick or treat you should check out that episode that's right you should check out this i think it's still not monetized so i mean whatever uh, you know if you don't watch it eh, it's fine Uh, you should do x2 no you know what you know what listen to the trick or treat episode and watch it on odyssey because those two platforms are still monetized for that particular episode youtube ah skip it anyway uh watch an episode that's monetized most of them (laughs) um Yes, uh, Brian Cox as Hannibal Lecter, Dennis uh, Farina as Rest Jack. In peace. Oh, he died. I didn't know that. 2013, I believe. Oh, I didn't know that. As Jack Crawford, uh, he was in that show, Crime Story. I think in but, that show. <laughs> uh, and Stephen Lang as Freddie Lowndes. I always forget that Stephen Lang because he's such a squirrely looking dude, and usually in modern movies he's like a tough, chiseled guy. Yeah. Uh, and Joan Allen as Reba, and then. Some lady is Molly. I forgot to write her down. Uh, so yeah, I saw this movie um, actually right before Red Dragon. So it was like back to back because I wanted to see what the previous version was. And Joan Allen. Yeah. No, Joan is Allen was. Reba, Mo- hold on. Kim Grease. I'm sure that's Molly. So yeah, uh, I watched this years ago. I've seen it a couple times. And yeah, it's. It's really good. It's got a very unique style to it. I have here, it's it's very 80s. They definitely try to do the cinematography thing a lot, yeah. whatever, but it's a lot of like beach or just yes. like nothing in the background. You know what I mean? There's a lot of like synth music yeah, yep. or just really, really overbearing power ballads. Or absolutely nothing. Or absolutely nothing. But some some scenes it works with absolutely nothing. Yeah. But then there's like, you're right. There's scenes where like you got these deep blues and then Francis house is all neon and weird and spacey. And then you have like Hannibal. It's just bright white. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah there's a lot of creepy imagery. Uh, a lot of slow-mo dream stuff in it, which I appreciate it. Um, I do want to say there's an effect later in the movie where he's like, because Will Graham has that imagination projection yeah. thing, and he's like hallucinating the dead woman in the bed with mirrors in her eye, and I don't know how they did that effect in 1980 something, but it's like haunting, it's like terrifying. Like that image, like is real creepy because she's like moving with the mirror. Yep. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, by the way, uh, so the Tooth Fairy Killer, he breaks into people's houses, he kills the families, he puts mirrors in their eyes, and then he has his way with the Pieces mother. Of mirror. But he wants like he smashes the mirrors because he hates himself. But he also puts the mirrors in their eyes so it looks yeah. like they're alive and stuff. He's he's a creep. Yeah, he's a creep, and it's a woman's fault. His grandmother and his mom. They don't touch on that in the movies, but in the book, uh, well, the, the one movie they do a little bit. Um, yeah, but getting back to uh, very very eighties. At one point, uh, you know, Will wears tiny pink swim shorts. <laughs> Not a lot of. <laughs> Not a lot of male heroes wearing pink swim shorts. It's fine. 
It would be a comedy. Like I can see someone in a Marvel movie wearing that as like a joke, but like <laughs> you can't really. I love the eighties and nineties where you were allowed to do that. There's like an X Files episode where like Mulder, why can't you do it now? You could do it, but it'd be like a joke for some reason. It's clothing. An example. Early 90s, there's an X-Files episode where David Duchovny is swimming in a red Speedo. Mm. And it's just a completely normal scene. And he's just wearing this tight little red Speedo. And then the X-Files revival, the one good episode, a uh, guy sp- sp- peeking in on Mulder in his bedroom. And he's wearing the original red Speedo. And it was treated as a joke. For some reason, red Speedos are jokes. You're saying that they shouldn't be treated as a joke. Yeah. So if I wore them in an episode, you would not laugh. Uh, I'd be very uncomfortable because I don't want to be near you in a red speedo, but you can do you. So, man, Hunter, um, <laughs> uh, what did you think of Will in this movie? Um, I like him. Uh, he he definitely has the uh, unhinged thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like um, I guess since we're talking about Red Dragon too, whatever. Mm. I actually prefer him. Over Ed Norton, yeah. Oh wow. Um, I, I feel like Ed Norton's a little more like chill with everything. Yeah, I have this. Whatever, this you feel like he's gonna <laughs> freaking like pop off at any second. I have it here. Like he's supposed to be haunted by like the past trauma yep. with Hannibal. So they explain it in the movie, and it's funny. The book and this movie, they kind of like late into the story. They're like, oh, by the way, here's what happened with that guy Hannibal. Uh, we kind of stumbled onto the fact that he was the killer. Yeah. He tried to kill me, but I stopped him and. Uh, and then he got arrested. <laughs> Red Dragon, they decided to elaborate more on that. Um, but he's haunted because he's like, yeah, I was physically damaged. But then, like, my brain was all messed up because he mm-hmm. puts his mind into the killer. And Hannibal also does that. But Hannibal's an insane person. Yeah. So when a, when a normal guy does it, it fucks with their brain a little bit. But um, he's supposed to have trauma and whatnot. But, yeah, the movie makes it seem like he's also a fucking creep. Uh, um, I mean, I, he kind of is. Honestly, in this in this film... They don't introduce Francis like proper to like 50 something minutes into the movie. And yeah. even then they don't really introduce him really until like mm-hmm. a little bit after that. So like so for the first like hour of this movie, it's kind of like is Will the killer because he's really fucking creepy. Yeah. Uh he's talking to himself and monologuing. I'll, I'll explain how they got around that in the next one. Um I really like uh, he's a really good actor. I really mm-hmm. like him, but yeah, it is a very it's a very it's a choice. His performance was a choice. Yeah. Um, and he's more unhinged than uh, Brian Cox's uh, Hannibal. <laughs> yeah, Brian, all right, like, so Brian Cox's Hannibal is pretty nonchalant. He's, chill, <laughs> he's chilling. He's still menacing. He's a dude. He's still menacing or whatnot, but he's not like the charming Hannibal yeah. that we now he's know. He's talking very fast, very like, yeah. blunt, matter of fact. Like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do like how they film their scenes together for yeah. the most part when they're talking. They're framed through the same... Every time the camera cuts, they're framed through the same bar. Because mm. the whole thing is like, are they so different? Are they the same? Which the book uh, plays on in the TV show. Heaven, like the, the TV show... I really need to watch everything with the, the TV show, show like, made so that good. like the theme of the fucking thing. Um, but yeah, Hannibal Lecter, he just seems like kind of like an asshole who's bad he got caught. Which I guess he is, but like it's... Yeah. It's just so blunt in this. He's like, you asshole. You're kind of like me. That's the only reason you caught me. I hope a I hope a tooth fairy eats you. Uh but yeah, he's not like he's only there to give the information to the killer to mm-hmm. raise the stakes. Uh which is what he was used for in the book. But I guess the character stood out in the book, which is why he brought him yeah. back in Silence of the Lambs. But yeah, Brian Cox I think does a good job. Uh, I still think he's like not creepy. Mm. Um what's the word I'm looking for? I said menacing. I guess menacing, yeah. yeah. Um, there, there's just a, there's a presence about him. Yeah, I, you know. I, <laughs> I will say they filmed. I don't know if you could tell. They filmed his uh, whole prison thing where he's at in a museum, and you could tell because it looks like the architecture for a museum and not a prison. Hmm. I'm looking at it. I'm like, I looked at the fact. It's like filmed in the museum. Like, oh yeah, that's totally a museum. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's the most well. Oh my god. Like that is a really fancy looking prison. Holy shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he gets regular bars. He doesn't get the glass. Mm-mm. Lucky him. Lucky him. Mm. So, um, by the way, I forgot Dr. Chilton was in this movie. Chilton? Ch- Chilton, not Chitlin. Chitlin. <laughs> uh, he's only in one scene and he's just a guy. Yeah. I'm like, how? Oh, I like the pervy dude. <laughs> you like Chitlins? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's one scene that I don't remember from the book and it's not in the other versions where like uh, they're trying to bait uh, the killer out. 
Well, they, they do it earlier by calling him gay. He put the shorts on Charles Leeds after he was dead. I believe he did this to make sure we wouldn't think he was gay. That was the funniest thing in this. It's like, <laughs> they, they don't realize. They're like, oh, wait a minute. We'll just keep calling him gay because it gets under his skin and he'll like, at some point, he'll show up and be like, I'm not gay. They're like, well, that's the guy. That's the guy. Would that work now for serial killer? Depends on the person. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now the killer wouldn't want to expose himself. I'm like, well, I don't want to be like a homophobe. People might try to cancel me. That's not how everybody acts. But it's fine. <laughs> I just love that. Like, like France is supposed to be like real, like focused and whatnot. And then like one guy calls him gay. He's like, well, I gotta, I gotta nip this in the butt. Holy shit. I don't want people thinking that <laughs> it was the seventies when it was written. It was a different time. Now, now, if you did it now, Francis would be like, you know, maybe, maybe I am. That might be, I, I should really explore oh my this. God. Explore it. <laughs> not going to use the wife anymore. Now it's going to be the dad. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, well, there's a, there's a fake out where they're like, they, they're setting up a sting. Mm. Uh, and this jogger is coming up to Will and you think he's going to like murder him. By the way, Will like beats the shit out of him. And earlier when Freddie Lowndes, he's and he yeah, car. so Freddie Lowndes is an asshole reporter who took pictures of Will when he was in the hospital. Yep. <laughs> and when he, like, confronts him again, Will flips him, Dude, shatters the car, breaks someone's I'm not, car. I'm not kidding. When I watch that, no. I'm, I'm bursting out laughing. It and, then, <laughs> and then you see in the next movie, he's like, you're an asshole. And then he walks away. I'm like, oh, wow, this Will's a little bit more restrained. <laughs> So they beat up this Again, guy. Again, unhinged. <laughs> they beat up the guy, and I love that. It's one of the only comedy moments, but it's like, yeah. the movie is so serious that you don't even realize it's a comedy, but he's just like, so the guy thinks he's being mugged. He's like, take my money, and then the cops swarm. They're like, it's not him, and I like the guy doesn't realize what's going on. He's like, why are you, he literally says, what you moving in slow motion for, man? I'm being mugged. My <laughs> God. Um, so Francis is home in Manhunter. In the book, he lives in his grandmother's mansion, which used to be a retirement home. It was, I guess it was left to him after she died. Yeah. Uh, in this, he lives in like a really stylish fucking house that's space themed. What is that one wall? It looks like a picture of Mars. Is it Mars? It's Mars or a desert. Well, yeah, it feels like it's spacey. He's got like that cool star lamp. He's got like the moon framed. I have Is this your bedroom? We were just talking that... uh. A few months back, I was transferring people's home videos. And I'm like, oh, that's how they catch the killer. And now I'm realizing that I also have space-themed stuff in my house. But my grandmother didn't abuse me. So I think we're good. I don't think I'm going to be... If I see something super sauce with any type of murder, <laughs> I'm literally just going to be like, just, just check on this guy. I have a key to his apartment. <laughs> I will write you out. Oh, I will write you out. So well, I'm going to come in. I'm like, I got, hey, Johanna, I got a tattoo today. <laughs> like, oh, where? My entire body. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> I'd be like, what are you? I'm like, <laughs> I'm the great tiger. I'm Tony the tiger. I'm a tiger now. <laughs> Immediately, I would call you out. <laughs> You're going down. Then I'll really be on your Twitter and be like, hey, 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 I am a murderer. <laughs> I'm not like Francis Dollarhide, okay? He was a guy who lived alone and couldn't get late. Manhunter, Manhunter. So, um, yeah, uh, I really like Tom Noonan's Francis Dollarhide, but they really choose not to give you any backstory on him. Yeah. None. This is nothing. So, I, I think he's terrifying. Yeah. Okay, because you don't know what's going on in his head. Yeah. Unlike Ray Fiennes, you get the backstory and mm. kind of become more sympathetic to him or whatever. Yeah. I'm not sure who I like better. Uh, I will say, I think they use this for this this approach of not mm -hmm. explaining the killer uh, for the next film. Yeah. Because James Gum, Buffalo Bill, we talked about in that episode. Go back and check that episode. Uh, we talk about how like he does have like a like a fuller backstory in the book and it's yeah. purposely admit, but they leave clues like mm -hmm. I was joking with Sean. Like it's funny in that movie, it's like you can see the different phases Buffalo Bill went through. It's like, well, he had a Nazi phase at some point, and now he's going through his lady phase. <laughs> he's got many phases. Uh but yeah, because like the teeth that Francis used, he uses dentures and they're molded after his grandmother's teeth. 
And that's like a big deal. Yeah. And they establish the teeth in this version, but they never tell you why he has it. So I get it. It could be creepier if you don't know. Yeah. It, like a Michael Myers. Like a Michael Myers. First movie, terrifying because he's just a dude and he's yeah. doing these things. Then they decided to but it, add no, other stuff. But no, it's, it's, like, it's his sister. Oh, no, he has to kill his whole family. Now a cult made him do it. Now he's marrying his niece. Mm -hmm. he didn't marry had a baby his with niece. his niece. Yeah. I don't know. And then and then he's like, oh wait, my sister's still alive. All my burns are healed. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh yeah, but I do like Tom Noonan as this character. Mm -hmm. I will say, uh, this version of the movie is like it's real sped up. Yeah. They kind of like I guess because there is so much slow-mo and dream stuff. The beginning's pretty it's paced well. And then, like, toward the middle, they start speeding things up. Yeah, it gets and, weird. Yeah, like the Reba, Joan Allen's Reba. <sighs> she needs to slow the fuck down. Uh, yeah, that whole relationship is sped up. Because he meets her. And I don't think she's as charming as the other girl. No. He meets her. He takes her to the tiger, like, right away. Yeah. Which was a real tiger. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it was a real tiger in the next movie. But, yeah, it was, like, a sedated tiger. And, like, the doctor in that is, like, the actual tiger's doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they're, they're, they're boning on the couch, like a scene later. I'm like, that's a very quick relationship. Holy shit. Have uh, you met me and Ian? Have you met a lesbian? Anyway. I'm not kidding. Anyway. <laughs> yes, we all know the joke. It's not even a joke. If, if you have friends that are lesbian, look at their relationships. I guarantee it. You know the joke like I'm talking about, right? Hmm? Okay. Well, uh, what uh, does a lesbian bring on the second date? A U-Haul to move in. What does a gay guy bring? Wait, why's it gotta be a U-Haul? What What does a gay guy bring on a second date? What second date? A gay person told me that show. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I think I think uh, Rosie O'Donnell did that on um. She definitely used the U-Haul joke on Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Wait, it's the, like Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, there's a whole there's a whole season where uh, Rosie O'Donnell and Larry David are after the same woman. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, it gets really, really sped up, the whole relationship, and then the third act, like, changes everything. Yeah. There's no going to Brooklyn to hunt down the, the red dragon painting. Uh, there's no- A lot was left out. There's no fake out ending with the faking of the death. Dude, it just turns- so good in red dragon. Yeah, it just turns into, like, it's the 80s. They shoot them a lot. Yeah. But-, but Set to the song in Agata De Vida. Like, it turns into a music. By the way, that is like a 20 minute song because I'm watching. I'm like, wait, he's on the plane. I'm like, and I'm like, oh, I remember that song is super long. So realistically, you probably could go on like a fast plane. <laughs> but um, I guess because they it's weird what they wanted to take from the ending in this since they changed it. They're like, well, we still want Will to confront him. And I think even. Jack Crawford's like, why are we going? Like the SWAT team, what do we have to be there yeah. for? Uh, it's like, he needs to be there. He does get his face cut up. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, he needs to be the one to kill Francis, even though he doesn't do that in the book. Yeah, well, um, yeah the whole music video ending is pretty funny. You're, you notice they were like, they were cutting frames out of shots. It was it like was, chopping. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty casual with that shotgun, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he's just bam. Those yeah, cops no recoil. Yeah, yeah, no recoil. Those cops make no attempt to get cover. They like literally open up the door. They're like, ah. Um, so yeah, the ending is not as good as the book uh, because it is sped up. We we don't really and things are omitted. Things are omitted. It just seems like Francis now he gets jealous of the guy and then decides he's gonna kill Reba. Yeah. Oh, okay. There was like a little bit more to it mm -hmm. in the other version. Uh, and then the movie just kind of abruptly ends. He's like, well, I'm better now. Let's, we're hanging out on the beach. And then and then the song play. What, is the, what does the song say? Heartbeat, heartbeat. Listen to my heartbeat. Oh. There's another song when, he, again. Oh, <laughs> when he's uh, spot. The same pitch. <laughs> When he's spying on Reba, there's that song that's like, strong as... You were joking about the 80s song. They're so overbearing. 
not enough power ballots in the rest of the oh series, I think. We need more power ballots. <laughs> well, remake it, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Stupid. Uh, I will say Will's family is kind of a bigger part in this. Yes. He's, him and his lady are getting... They, yeah, it, what, basically it's the right amount of Hannibal. Yeah. Like how it would be in the book. Yeah. And you get more of the family. Like even that nice little scene where he's talking with his son in the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they actually had the conversation about mental health and stuff. And yeah. like what happened with them. But then the other one... The, Family's like barely there, but you still yeah. see that there's, you know, Ed Norton's not getting late enough in that no, one. This not. one, Will, Will yeah. Peterson, he's, he's getting it on. Yeah. I love the shot of just his like chisel body in the reflection, but then the Washington Monuments kind of like in line with him. Like, <laughs> anyway. I'm like, that was a choice. <laughs> that was a but choice. But not enough family. Yeah. A lot of Hannibal. Yeah. Yeah. They switch it. Um, Let me see. Which I mean, it's. Anthony Hopkins, Silence of the Lambs. Like, of course, you're going to use Anthony Hopkins more. Like, why yeah. not? Uh, I did, we mentioned this in Silence of the Lambs, but yeah, the cop looking up uh, the the employees' names goes on to play Barney in the other yeah, films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another thing he gets rid of the red dragon tattoo. Yep. But they did do it. They like there are they use it in all the promotional stuff. It might even be. Is it on the front? Or is no, no. Name? There are covers where they have it. So they actually did do. It's interesting. So there's two paintings that are the red dragon and the women clothed in sun one is a front angle and the other is a behind angle this movie uses the front angle and that's the one that they had painted on his mm -hmm. chest it was like a whole thing it's like the curly part right yeah and then uh, apparently michael mann they just thought it was too much and they decided just not that's to include it the point of the him because i guess they were like well i mean if they're getting rid of like the grandmother backstory and stuff then i guess they thought it was just explaining too much um uh, but I will say, though, we mentioned it in the Hannibal review, but me and Trisha reviewed a movie called Dario Argento's Opera. Mm. And that literally uses the end of the man, the Red Dragon book where the killer fakes his death with like a, another body mm. and then comes back to attack the person and then gets killed. That's actually really funny. Dario Argento plagiarizing. As far as I know, got away with it. Some people get away with it. Can't all be winners. <laughs> Some <laughs> other people can't get away with it. Anyway. Uh, the 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 Patreon is where you can find the review of Dario Gento's opera. Uh, it's a very fun episode. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, the overall Manhunter, I think it's a fine film. Mm -hmm. It's very stylistic. It's very dreamlike. It's good. I think I would have liked it more if Michael Mann did it like five or ten years later. Like post-heat Michael Mann, I think really would have like nailed it. Because this is like this is like an early film for him. Yeah. Uh, but so other than that... Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah. I don't think I would go back and rewatch as much as other movies, but mm -hmm. if I see it's on or something. Yeah. Uh, it does. It does have third act issues where mm -hmm. they just speed everything up and just ends on a shootout. I mean, it's an awesome shootout, but it's just kind of like, Oh, the book, the book was a little bit more than this. Yeah. Uh, did not do well. Mm -hmm. Even, even maybe they should have called a red dragon. Maybe it would have done well. Uh, did not do well. And we explained in our sounds of the lambs episode that that movie decided not to reference it. And that movie is not a sequel, even though it's based off a sequel. Uh, but yes, years later, after Silence of the Lambs does super well, and Hannibal really <laughs> divided audiences. We got a review of that. Uh, I personally like the film. I like Hannibal. Uh, but it was still did really, really well. They're like, well, we can do a third it's one. Anthony Hopkins. They're like, we can do a third one. There's still room for more. And Silence of the Lambs and Red Dragon are kind of similar. Uh, whereas Hannibal is Thomas Harris being like, I don't care, whatever. An eel goes up a guy's ass or something. Uh, no, no, no. The eel goes down his mouth. They shove, the, they shove the rod yes. up his end. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> to Red Dragon, 2002, I think. Uh, 2002. Directed by Brett. You got up here. I even it's see. an Entertainment Weekly from when it came out. Uh Oh, this is actually a really good like condition. Yeah, I have a lot of my old Entertainment Weeklies. I don't know why I put them around the set. Three fifty. Oh my lord. Yeah. Um, came out in two thousand two. Directed by Brett Ratner. Allegedly did some things. Allegedly. Allegedly. Who did the music? Danny Elfman. Yeah. Yeah. Who did the one in Manhunter? Was it? It was. Did they not have music. Sons of bitches. They don't have music. Oh well. Put the name up there, Jess. Um. Bloop, bloop. 
So yeah, so this is after, you know, Hannibal divided people. They're like, hey, let's get back to basics. We'll do this prequel because prequels are the thing now. Thanks, George Lucas. Phantom Menace episode. <laughs> um, which we love. So we good. love that movie. It's a great movie. We love Phantom Menace. It's great. Jar Jar Binks is in it. That's right. And Hannah Sith Speeder. Uh, now. Sith Speeder. <laughs> so they were writing this movie. Apparently, like, they couldn't get people to really sign on until Ted Talley, who wrote the first movie, came back to write the script. Okay. And then people were like, okay, we'll come back if that guy's on board. Because, like, the previous movie, they're like, if it's going to be like that, we're out. We're out. I'm not doing that. Uh, this time, Ed Norton as Will Graham. Yep. Anthony Hopkins returning as Hannibal. A younger Hannibal who looks older. It was before they could digitally, it's it's before fine. they could digitally it's fine. It wasn't that distracting. He did lose like twelve pounds for the role, mm -hmm. but like when I'm looking at him, like, and then watch Silence of the Lambs, like, don't worry, it's fine. Should I aim it's, for fifteen? It's fine. It's fine. 15, it's fine. It's fine. It's anyway, fine. Anyway, uh, Ralph Fiennes, is it Ralph Fiennes Ray or Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes as Francis Tyler Hyde? Harvey Keitel as Jack Crawford. They couldn't get Scott Glenn back for mm -hmm. some reason. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, the late Philip Seymour Hoffman, he's yelled as, at you on the phone before. He has yelled at me on the phone before as Freddie Lowndes and Mary Louise Parker as Molly. And I forgot to write down who who plays Reba. It's God damn it. Of course, we all know the person who plays. It's not on here. So, hold on. It's not on here. Is it on the phone? No. Of course, that lady that we all like. It's not. Emily Watson. Oh, that is her. Huh. Where is it? It's on the phone. Oh, you told me no. Uh, I'm okay. right again. <laughs> Emily Watson. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to knock it. Emily, Emily Watson plays Ariba. Uh, Mary Louise Parker as Molly. Uh, they really played up Hannibal's importance in this story. Starting from scene one, we had heard in the previous film that he killed a, uh, one of the flutists for a uh, symphony. Yep. Benjamin Raspell, which apparently is a popular name in the, ha the Hannibal universe because that's also the name of a guy's head that they found in the jar. That's what I, you really should watch the previous movie and take notes before you write the sequel. But it's anyway, fine, it's fine. Uh, they actually show him in. I do like him in the symphony, like just cringing at the guy's flute. He's like, oh, God damn it. They show him feeding Benjamin to the uh, the rest of the board. Um, and then they they actually show the scene of Will like in front. I think it's a pretty good scene. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do like, he's just like, how did you not think about this, Hannibal? And Hannibal's like, I don't know. I don't know. I was working on my ponytail. He had a ponytail. That was very, that was very upsetting. Why? I don't know. I don't even like the ponytail. You were you to judge other people's hair. Just, I didn't even picture pre-jail Hannibal rocking a ponytail. Oh, that, that's it's all it's fine. <laughs> I'm just thinking about... You dropped that C-3PO from Phantom Menace. <laughs> All right, put it down. Um, <laughs> I'm mad we didn't get to see Hannibal be a ladies' man. Because in the Hannibal book, they mentioned, like, yeah, he used to hook up with a lot of hot babes. And it's like, oh, we didn't get to see any of that. So, yeah, uh, the opening is exciting with him and Will fighting and uh, him, like, getting shot by Will and whatnot. But I think it was also effective. He got shot just, a lot. He did get shot a How lot. How he survive that? He did get shot a lot. I don't know. Look, Brett Ratner, he was high off those Rush Hour movies. He's all about action and... <sighs> And uh, outing people, apparently, and doing inappropriate stuff, allegedly, allegedly, uh, enough to make Warner Brothers sever ties with him. Um, mm -hmm. That is the thing. They keep other people, though. The thing is, Brett Ratner is not known for being a great filmmaker, and this movie's really good. And it's like, well, yeah, he, he, just, he had the blueprint from Michael Mann, a talented filmmaker. I'm like, I could have made a good remake of this if Michael Mann was the previous guy and I was allowed to do every almost everything he did, he had a blueprint. The script is similar enough. It's like it, it was really hard to yeah, fuck. Do, do, have you seen the two scenes with uh, when he goes to talk to Hannibal in his cell? Yeah. If you like put, pair them yeah. together, it's maybe like two or three things change whatever. And it's mainly like the wording. Yeah. Well, a lot of the dialogue is from the mm -hmm. book. So it's just like that was the thing. People are like, why do they get Brett Ratner to do this? It's like because literally anyone could have done this with this book and this script anyone could have done it. Um, but no, I think he does like a uh, fine job. Uh, it has a really good opening with like the Dollar Hyde's book that fill gets you up to speed. I thought that was really cool. Danny Elfman's score is good. Yep. Um, they don't go into the specifics of Francis's backstory, 
but they give you enough. Like yeah. you get the creepy grandmother. You you get enough of that. You know who did her voice? Ellen Bernstein. Oh, shut up, you filthy little beast. I should have put you in an orphanage, grandson or not. From The Exorcist and other films. Requiem for a Dream. That's another <laughs> film. What else is she in? Oh, a movie. Jared Leto's really good. Jared Leto's in that movie. Anyway, uh, mm. yeah, Ellen Bernstein is the uh, voice of his grandmother in the flashback, and she, like, tried to chop his dick off because he wet the bed. Yeah. Take him to a doctor. Some some people have your ur- urological. Mm. Yeah, some people have issues. Don't don't threaten to cut their dick off. That's going to make things worse. The kid's going to end up being a murderer. Uh, in the book, he, like, he gets all, like, messed up, and he, like, slaughters, like, a chicken house. Like, he goes into, like, a chicken coop and just slaughters the chickens and whatnot. He's a little messed up. And then he lives with his mom afterwards and her new families, like kids, like mess him up and beat him up and shit. Mm. Poor Francis. He eventually joins the military and then gets discharged honorably, though. Mm. Uh, they leave all that out. There was going to be another voice in this. Yeah. Uh, f- you were actually going to hear Francis talk to the dragon persona. And they actually recorded it. And it's Frank Langella. Huh. And you can see the deleted scenes of it. They tried it like multiple ways, I think. I think they tried Frank Langella, and if I remember right, they did one where he's talking to himself. Uh, and in the end, I think they nailed it. They're like, it's actually creepier if there's no voice. Yeah. So it's actually cool to see like Francis like reacting to things that you can't hear. I actually like that yeah. a little bit more. Um, yeah, he's a little bit truer to the book because uh, he does live in the, the family mansion. He is jacked. So in the book, like Francis is jacked they make a point to say like he could be a bodybuilder in his 40s if he wanted to hmm. and tom noonan's tall but he didn't look jacked yeah he, he looked lanky yeah and ray fine ray fines looks really good at this but he's still not like he's in good shape and he's not bodybuilder you can see his dick flopping around i thought that was funny we all laughed in the theater when that happened of course you did i saw this in theaters when he runs up the stairs and you see his dick flopping around. we're like me and my mom were like ah it's just the penis. It was just fun. We didn't expect to see it, though. That was the thing. Because b- movies always hide penises. We should see more. It, it's a double standard, I feel. We should see more. We should. We should. Um, you know the movie I'm working on? Gonna add a lot of penis to it. Who's? It's not cast yet. Can I cast? And part of the casting stuff, whatever, we can have him show. <laughs> I'm kidding. I would not do that. Are oh you going to be a Brett Ratner? <laughs> yes. <Are> you... <laughs> Apparently, Brett Ratner, like, took pictures of Brendan Fraser and, like, didn't tell him he was going to use them in a book and didn't get his permission to use them in a book. Brendan Fraser feels, like, really misled. That's a little weird. Why did they torture that poor man? Oh, my God. Leave him alone. I need to see that new movie he's in. Mm-hmm. Brendan Fraser. The, the whale? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hear that's good. Um, Will Graham, uh, I think, is more likable in this version. You prefer the insane Will Graham. Yeah, I like the unhinged. Yeah. Uh, I think that was like a choice. They're like, can you not play him like a weirdo? And they make sure to have him talking into a recorder mm-hmm. because the Manhunter one, he's just talking out loud. Yeah. He's like, you son of a bitch. You touched, you touched her, didn't her, you? Yeah. I'm going to fucking... You fuck. took your gloves off and you touched her. Because <laughs> you had like, someone walking by like, hey, Will, are you okay? What's going on? But no, they make sure he's but like... No, he's not okay. <laughs> imagine whoever he has to send those tapes to. All right, God, Will's in a mood today. <laughs> um, but yeah, he doesn't come off as a creepy weirdo. We don't get a lot of his family too much. Um, you get enough to have an established thing. Like you have the beginning when they're when they go to go to the farm when they're in hiding, a little bit toward the end, and then yeah. Uh, but they don't have slow motion sex in this one. I think that was a letdown. No blue lights or slow motion sex. Um, Bill Duke is in it for a second. I love Bill Duke from Predator. Mm-hmm. He was Mac in Predator. Did you notice he had a tiny noose in his office? No. Yeah. So when Bill Duke is in his office talking to Will, like behind him, there's like a, a flag and a case, you know, the flags that you get. Yeah. And, then, and there's just a tiny noose. And I kept looking at him like, why does he have that? So where can I get that? I want a tiny noose on my desk and be like, what, what are you coming in to complain about? <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's him. Shh. What did you think of Philip Seymour Hoffman's Freddie Lowndes? 
I like him better than the other one. <laughs> so scummy. He's so but scummy. But I also just really like Phil, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman anyway, so like He was a he was a good one. He was a good one. God, that last Hunger Games movie. The digital smile they put on his face. Yeah. That was weird. Mm, whatever. Remember they had that scene of uh who's the guy in um Who's the guy in the Hunger Games movies? The funny guy helps them. Woody Harrelson. Oh. He has that scene where he's all like, Philip Seymour Hoffman wrote you a letter. I'm going to read it now. It's like, oh, God damn it. Um, poor yeah, guy. He was supposed to be in that a lot more. Yeah. Oops. Mm. Uh, great actor. Um, he is so scubby in this. He's like, he really captures the douchebaggery of the character, which is why it was confusing in the show when they turned that character into a hot redhead. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I'm like, uh, this is this is confusing it's me fine. now. This is confusing me. I'm going to be a dragon. Uh, <laughs> this this version of the script uh, takes its time. Mm. And I don't mean because they definitely add in extra scenes of Hannibal. But it actually is like, I feel like it's better paced. Yes. Uh, where we actually get to see the relationship between Francis and uh, Reba. Mm -hmm. Establish it a little bit more. D we, and Reba. D and Reba. We get to learn a little bit more about them. We get to see like the, the conflict with him. They do the Brooklyn thing. Manhunter completely erased, got rid of him going to Brooklyn to oh, eat yeah. the uh, Red Dragon painting at the Brooklyn Museum. I went to the Brooklyn Museum. That is a very nice museum. You ever been there? Mm -mm. I believe. I went to a museum in Brooklyn. I believe it was the Brooklyn Museum. I feel like you would know. It was very big. Yeah. I, I can't I feel like you would know. I think I went to the Brooklyn Museum to see the David Bowie exhibit. And that was a wonderful exhibit. And they had a lot of stuff there. That was a fun time. Um, yeah, he goes there and he eats the painting because he thinks that'll stop the dragon. It doesn't. But he only eats the one painting. Where was the second red dragon painting? He's got to go hunt that down, too. He's got, he's got, where, where, where do you think they have that? They have the thinker statue in the Brooklyn yeah. Museum there. And I'm like, wait a minute. I thought that was in Philly and France. Then again, it does take place in the late 80s, so I don't know where it was in the late 80s. I don't know. Anyway, they have that whole subplot in there, which I thought was funny. <laughs> when he just hits that lady, and then the other lady catches him, and he, like, chases her away. One of the big changes is Chilton. Chitlins? Yeah, Chitlins. Uh, he is way respectful of Will and, like, admires him. And it's like, yeah, it's because it's not a woman. Yeah, he's fangirling over him, and he's not, he's not real sleazy. Where it, the contrast to that is Hannibal is really rude to Will. <laughs> he's just like, he's, he's I do like the difference in the scene where like uh, Will first goes in to talk to him in the uh, Manhunter mm -hmm. and already just looking at him, having the conversation, whatever. Yeah. In this one, Hannibal's just like, I'm going to lay on this bed, not even really acknowledge your presence, whatever, but I'm still yeah. going to talk to you and everything. Eventually I'll get up and I'll do my thing. But, 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 it's, but, but it's funny, you know, it's. Typical man. A guy shows up wearing something. He's like, oh, that smells like shit. <laughs> a la axe a, body a lady shows up. He's like, oh, you, you're wearing this and this and blah, blah, blah. It's really nice. Typical man. A lady I like. I'm like, oh, you smell really nice today. I don't know what any guy. Why are you I, smelling women? They wear a lot of perfume. They? <laughs> yeah. They usually do. I can't smell you right now. Um... Let me see here. Yeah, so they add more of him. Uh, do you like his exercise leash? <laughs> I do, actually. You know what's funny? He can, like, lean forward. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny? <laughs> uh, airplane. Wee! <laughs> I was reading, they mentioned this character in Manhunter. They mentioned him in this, but I was reading they gave a lot of his dialogue to Hannibal. Uh, the character Dr. Bloom is left out of both of these adaptations. And then, and then you get to the Hannibal TV show where they're a major yeah. character and turned into a woman, woke. Um, so I thought that was pretty funny. I'm like, wow, didn't make it into either of these. And then it's like, oh, now they're a major character. Um, yeah, overall, I think the movie is really, really good. They do the red dragon tattoo. Apparently it took eight hours to apply. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. Uh, and they use the book ending, yeah. which I remember I, at that point when I saw it in the theater, I did not read the book and I had only seen Manhunter. So I was expecting the same ending. Were you like blown away? Yeah, I was like, oh shit. And then they realized that like, oh yeah, that's the other dude he already shot outside. By the way, and I, that is a change. Because in the book, he does kill that guy, but he kills some random guy at a gas station and uses that body. I actually huh. like the change that the movie did where he killed the guy he was jealous of. I'm like, that's pretty funny. That's, that's pretty funny. Although someone should have been, 
I think the problem there is like those are not the same people. <laughs> those are not the same body type. Uh, but yeah, I really like Reba in this one. Mm. I really like she's like you really connect with her and whatnot. Uh, we were talking about Francis. If this if this took place today, and this is the problem with the Hannibal TV show. He would clean house. Ha- like he's got a scar, but it's fixed. It, depending, I mean, it's there. But. Yeah, but depending on what version he is, he's either really tall. I th- actually, as hell. actually, in the book, I think he grew a mustache to cover it up. Uh, he's either really tall or, or like really in good fine shape as hell. <laughs> and looks like a Harry Potter character. And women love that for some reason. So like the Red Dragon today, he'd be like, oh, I'm such a loner. Oh, I'm going to be a dragon. And someone's be like, hey, get on Tinder. And he's like, oh, my God, that's all these people with Deathly Hollow tattoos are following me. Oh, my God, wait, scalies? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> Jessica, please Photoshop Francis Dollarhide in a in a dragon furry costume at a furry convention. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be a dragon. He could have been a dragon. We could have saved Buffalo Bill, too, because there is the alt-fur community. Jessica... Please Photoshop Buffalo Bill into an alt fur picture. Oh my god. <laughs> what would Hannibal be? <laughs> <laughs> Hannibal would be doing mukbang video. <laughs> Jessica, please Photoshop Anthony Hopkins Hannibal into a mukbang video. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> we saved it. We saved all those people. <laughs> We found them hobbies that are normal. <laughs> Mesa Verger, we can't help. Mesa Verger, Mesa, Ma- Mesa Verger, uh, uh, he's, he, yeah, uh, uh, he's he's good. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll 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 circle back to him at some point and try to help him out. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really like Red Dragon. It's a great adaptation of the book. Uh, they couldn't. They couldn't help but put more Hannibal stuff, and they had to do the prequel teaser. What is her name? It's like, oh, I get it. So it's like a perfect. So it's like, Silence of the Lambs is gonna pick up like right after this, and Hannibal's gonna age, de-age de- ten age. years. <laughs> Benjamin Button. <laughs> uh, but people really liked it. I think all the actors did a great job in mm-hmm. it. It's not as well remembered as Silence of the Lambs, but I think. A lot of that might have just been because the first, the, the previous movie was so, that happens yeah. a lot. I think we talked about it before. We're like, the previous movie was such a big Man. disappointment yeah. that people didn't watch the follow-up, even though it was good. Famous example, Exorcist 3. Exorcist 3 is a great film, but Exorcist 2 is god awful. So no one went to see Exorcist 3 when it came out. Um, I'm going to talk about Exorcist 3 at some point. Uh, yes. So that brings us to the final one. Oh, don't forget, in this one, they oh. don't cut up Will's face. They don't cut up his face in this one. He's looking real pretty at the end. Mm-hmm. And he's on a boat, having the time of his life. Hannibal TV show. Now, I avoided this TV show initially. Why? I didn't like that it wasn't a direct prequel to Red Dragon. I didn't like that it was like a reboot in its own continuity. Uh, it's fine. I've since, and I mentioned the Sound Slams, I've since gone back and rewatched it. And I like, because the, I've said this a few times, like, because the movies were such good adaptations, I was fine with all the liberties that Hannibal took. Yeah. Because they got to work in stuff that got left out. Like, I think we mentioned Jack Crawford's wife having cancer was left out. That was put in. They put a lot of other stuff in. Um, So the second half of season three, the first half of season three is the book Hannibal. They went out of order. Uh, And the second half of season three is Red Dragon. Um, And I... They kind of, they were used in elements, obviously, beforehand. Mm. Uh, but this is the first time they were uh, adapting it directly. And I even like that in between the season, there was like a three-year gap that they said. Uh, so in the show, if you're not familiar, Hugh Dancy plays Will Graham. Mads Mikkelsen, I didn't mm. like him at first. His accent was too thick. No, Mads can do anything. I, I, grew, I, I grew into it. Mads Mikkelsen is Hannibal. Richard Armitage as Francis. He was the... the Thorin. He was the hobbit with dragon sickness. And he gets dragon sickness again. He's a dwarf. He was the dwarf in the hobbit is what I meant to say. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm the guy who called the Cimmerillion the Similarian. Oops. Um, Lawrence Fishburne as Jack Crawford. Lara Jean Korostecki as Freddie Lowndes. Uh, Nina 
are Arianda as Molly and Rutina Wesley from True Blood yep. as Reba. Uh, woke. Um, so anyway, no, she does a good job. <laughs> um, I was very happy when I saw her. I was like, Tara! <laughs> yeah. Uh, I say here, like, despite many changes to continuity, it follows it actually pretty well. He still processes film, I think, which seems a little dated, mm. if I remember right. Uh, also, speaking of cin uh, cinematography with, like, stuff, whatever, this freaking show. I have it here. So in the <laughs> Hannibal TV show, they really play up Will Graham's imagination stuff, but they do it through, like, really creepy visuals. Yeah. So, like, but before he knows who Hannibal is, he's imagining him as like this antler demon. Yep. Uh, there's really, really cool imagery. Um, and this show takes full advantage of this where like we actually see Francis as the red dragon like several times. Yep. And I'm like, that's clever. That's something you couldn't really do in the other ones or it would have been too hard to mm -hmm. do. Um, so they did that really, really well. Uh, I think the characters, the Will Graham on the TV show is weird. He is kind of closer to the Manhunter version where he's yeah. just a creepy weirdo. A little un not as unhinged, but he was still pretty... Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got issues. Uh, 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 and they they never say it outright, but because they couldn't use Clarice, they were like, hey, that whole thing with Hannibal being like real attracted to someone, I, he might have a thing for Will. Didn't they technically have her no, no, as no. the girl from... Um, no, no, no. Well, that was like... It wasn't her. It was like but, a reference. Yeah. Because in the book, um, Will Graham was Jack Crawford's protege. Mm -hmm. And actually, he's, I like how the movies give him happy endings because when you read the beginning of Silence of the Lambs, they're like, Will is a sad alcoholic now after his many encounters. I'm like, oof, end it rough for him. Uh, they never circle back to him to see how Will's doing. Mm -hmm. So that's a really, really downer. So Clarice is like Jack Crawford's like second chance. And in the book, she ends up with Hannibal world hopping. So Jack Crawford's kind of a failure. Um, but yeah, the Hannibal TV show, they reversed it where he had a female protege first who kind of like Clarice mm -hmm. and then it became Will. What was the actress's name? from? Oh, Black Emily Girl? Chomsky who was in the movie They Slash Them, which I reviewed on Patreon. Check that out. That's a, that's a movie. Um, yes. Uh, so in this version, instead of uh, Freddie Lowndes being captured and lit on fire. Yep. Isn't she like dead at this point? I forget. It's Dr. Chilton. So Dr. Ch yeah, Dr. Chitlins is the one who gets caught and lit on fire. What do you think of the best uh, wheelchair fire scene? I think it was the one in Manhunter. The one in Manhunter is actually scary. Yeah. Because it's like, because they, kind of like Exorcist 3, they do the thing where it's like a long setup and yeah. the security guard looks back and he's like, huh. And then looks back and then it comes right at the camera. Whereas Red Dragon, it's funny. You see a guy, he's like, huh, what's that? He's just, see, <laughs> don't see him, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's like a whole thing in the book where they analyze the wheelchair and they're like, where'd the killer get like, a wheelchair from the early 1900s. What the fuck? And it's kind of leads him on to yeah. where he would be. Um, yeah. What did you think of Richard Armitage as the dragon? He's fine. I think he was okay. I like his voice. So I like his voice too. I actually really like what you said about the creepy imagery and whatnot, but I like how when he's calling Hannibal on the phone, they like, they like hallucinate that they're in the room together. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Uh, they changed a few things around where, like, Will is the one who tries to convince Francis to kill Hannibal. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, it's, like, it's pretty accurate. And then at the end, it's like, oh, we're just going to fight him at a beach house. Like, oh, that didn't happen anywhere else. Will gets fucked up in that one, too. Uh, yeah, so they kill him. Uh, and I do like how he has dragon wings when they're slicing them up. Yeah. Uh, and then they uh, will attempt to do a murder-suicide with Hannibal. They're like rubbing on each other. Yep. And he pulls them off a cliff and they die, but it's implied that they might not have with the teaser at the end. So yeah, I mean, I'm including Hannibal season three, although we probably shouldn't, but I thought it'd be it, fun. It's fine. Uh, yeah, it's but yeah, I think they did really cool stuff. Like I said, <laughs> the imagery was really cool. Seeing Reba as the uh, girl clothed in sun was fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't expect them to nail it, and they did a surprisingly good job. Mm -hmm. From what I remember, I didn't have time to rewatch it. I'm sorry, but I remember watching it. And be like, oh, this actually works because I didn't think it could work in a modern setting. Uh, but yeah, so that is the those are the adaptations of Red Dragon. Which one is the best? <laughs> this is tough because you like win either way. 
for for something that's the same story, you get a lot of variety so in I'm, how it's I'm told. Not gonna, I'm not counting Hannibal season three. Okay. Um, I think I have to go with Red Dragon. I know that's like, like there's a lot of good things in this or whatever, but I think yeah. overall as a movie, I think Red Dragon sells. I know that's the easy answer, but yes. Although Manhunter, people really should check out. If it's anything, good. It's very good. If anything, just to see an early Michael Mann movie. But I honestly, I only think Red Dragon like wins by like a smidgen. Yeah. If like, if Manhunter didn't have like that weird, the weird third yeah. act, uh, if it was a little bit closer to the book, um, I think it could have worked. Yeah. Uh, but Red Dragon, although, like I said, I only think Red Dragon is good because this movie is good. Because there's no way Brett Ratner could have done this from yeah. scratch. <laughs> Brett Ratner had a good blueprint. He's like, I'm going to make it a little less weird for modern audiences. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you like Michael Mann, definitely check it out. It is really, really, a really good film. Uh, but yeah, Red Dragon wins. It gets the yeah. book right. Uh, you can't really beat Anthony Hopkins Hannibal. I'm sorry. You can't. Brian Cox, I love you, but. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he's kind of cheesing it up in this one. It's fine. But they had that scene where they give him like a little dinner and he's like, ah. <laughs> also, uh, Red Dragon's uh, Reba is thousands of times better than Manhunter Reba. Oh, Joan Allen, yeah. yeah. One day I got to review Face Off. Joan Allen was like the, the, the wife in Face Off. And I remember. Uh, well, speaking of X2, there it is. Yeah, and I remember John Travolta being like, I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave. And it cuts to Joan Allen's like flat ass in a pantsuit. I'm like, what the hell? Why didn't you change that line on the set? Anyway. Uh, He's in the flat booty. That's true. We, me and, uh, Straight as a board. Me and my friend Royce, we were talking at the Scarface episode. We're like, butts weren't invented to like the 90s. Because every movie before that, like, oh, look at that girl's flat butt. It's like, oh, okay. Don't uh, they make a joke about that in Scrubs? I think like so. Like, yeah. talks about Elliot's button, which is completely <laughs> flat. <laughs> so, uh, I think we're going to go Red Dragon, followed closely by Manhunter. Yes. And like I said, I like the Hannibal mm. TV adaptation. I love that TV show. It's so good. It is really good, unlike Clarice, which I think got canceled. Did Clarice get canceled? I haven't heard anything about it, so I would assume yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Maybe one day I'll check it out, but... Whenever it, I think like, I watched the like first two episodes, if I remember correctly, and I was just kind of like, eh. nah, I heard it wasn't good. I like the girl who played mm -hmm. her though; she was cute, and she mm -hmm. kind of looked like Jodie Foster. So Froster, Froster, yeah, <laughs> that's Jodie Foster's uh, cousin, <laughs> Jodie Froster. <laughs> and like I said, uh, when I said in the Hannibal episode, uh, Jillian Anderson wasn't allowed to play Clarice because of the X Files, but then she ended up in the Hannibal TV show. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, it kind of worked. Uh, yeah, so check those out. What is your favorite? Red Dragon adaptation. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Check out, if you're new here, we have a lot of new people to the channel recently. Welcome. If you're new here, check out our Silence of the Lambs episode and our Hannibal episode. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, Hannibal was a lot of fun. We had Trisha on here uh, talking about Italy and whatnot. That was that was, that was a good time. <laughs> Han uh, Silence of the Lambs was great. I called my mom during it because you apparently have a problem with our relationship. Uh, how we bonded over these wonderful films. I never said that at all. I said the age was a little, eh. Well, oh. we all can't have perfect mothers like Johanna. <laughs> My mother's an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. You shouldn't laugh at that. I'm laughing through the pain, Tony. <laughs> she back in the wedding this week? It varies week to week. Is she back in the wedding? <laughs> For Is she, now. she still my date? Yeah. <laughs> She's still my date. <laughs> It's really going to be your date. <laughs> I don't have a wedding date. I might have to take your mom. Uh, anyway, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, please check out the, those Thursday bonus videos mm. I've been doing. They've been a lot of fun. Check those out. Uh, follow us on Patreon. We have a lot of content on Patreon. Like I said, we've been working on this Halloween parody. And as of right now, we still have more filming to do. But as of right now, the behind the scenes vlog is like 20 minutes long. Uh, we it's had a longer than the short. longer than the short. Uh, the behind the scenes vlog is a lot of fun. Uh, you guys are yeah. Real I love that one scene of me and Ian, and I just <laughs> we just both piss you, you guys, off. <laughs> you guys are really gonna like the behind the scenes vlog on Patreon for how we made that. Uh, we got our ten dollar tier where I do exclusive streams and we give away exclusive uh, wallpapers. We are going. One day I'll be in a wallpaper. You were. You were in the Thor one. You were Lady Thor on the Thor wallpaper. I was real Thor. It's mighty Thor. No, I was real Thor. 
you were Lady Thor, and then Crystal was Sif. I know it was Valkyrie on the poster, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can replace a redhead. You can't You can't go the opposite <laughs> way. Hollywood just deemed it that way. Uh, yes, check those out. We are going to be at Philomoca on October 22nd, the weekend of October 22nd. Put the date down there. We're going to be at Philomoga for the uh, Crypt Video Rental uh, convention. Shutter just yeah, got saw, announced as a sponsor. Just, like, just looking at that list of like sponsors or whatever, I'm just like, yeah. look at us. So many, so look many sponsors us. there. Uh, you know, you know what other show is going to be there? Movie Dumpster. Movie Dumpster will be there. Uh, so check out Crypt Video Rental. It's going to be a lot of fun in Philly. I haven't been to Philly proper in a long time. Same. Yeah, I, mean, I missed that place. Uh, other than to drive through to pick people up at the airport. I was debating going stalking because the love of my life is currently filming in Philly. Ian's in a movie? Natalie Dormer. Oh, not your fiance. Right. Okay. Oh, I wish. Uh, so yes, uh, check all that out and we'll see you all later. Goodbye. They're playing like Felicia versus Bishamon. And if Bishamon ends with a certain move, you just cut Felicia in half. Did you make sure to see Orchid's thong? Yeah. Here's 30 more chances as she spins around. See, Tony? you've got the Batgirl shirt on and you're oh. wearing a Robin t-shirt. Batgirl and Robin to your Batman. And Turtles ha is like Star Wars in the like, Star Wars is a 70s thing that ran into the 80s. Yeah. Turtles started in the 80s, but really grew in the 90s. Yeah. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.